Okay, thanks to Rachel. Um, I've taken some screenshots. I'm going to get you guys set up with Zoom. First thing you need to do is just go to Zoom and you're going to sign up for an account and you're going to be using your Gmail account from school um, to use to sign into Zoom. In the upper right corner you'll see schedule a meeting and once you pick that you'll see there are a lot of different things um, that you can do here um, besides actually scheduling of course your meeting time and date and you can go ahead and set this up ahead of time before you have your sessions with students. So you'll set up your time, um, the duration, you can always make it longer than you need it to be because you'll end it when you need to end it. You can choose to require a meeting password, um, but I feel like that's just one more thing that kids have to worry about. So um, I don't think many of us will really require the password. Um, the meeting ID number is fine to be generated automatically. You're gonna be able to give that to the kids anyway. Um, you can make sure that your participants video is turned off which you should. Of course, make sure that your video is on. I don't have that marked off here on, on my screenshot, but make sure your video is on and then participant video is off. That could always change once you're in the meeting. Um, go ahead and keep your audio set for both telephone and computer audio. Um, for your meeting options, do not let students join before host. That would mean that they could talk to each other before you're on, so make sure to not check that box. Um, if you want them to be muted upon entry, which I think is a good idea, which is to have them all come in you know, silently, go ahead and click that box. Um, don't enable the waiting room. Um, if you want to record the meeting automatically, you can. Um, so that's an option that you can check. And we're really not sure about memory size yet, so that's kind of an optional whether we want to get going with that or not at the start. So once you filled all that in, you'll actually see your meetings listed. So on, you know, when it gets to the date and the time that you want to have your meeting, you can actually click on start. So that is a super easy thing when you set it up ahead of time. Now on your list of upcoming meetings, if you click on a particular meeting name and date, you'll go to the page with all the details on that meeting. So you could double check to make sure about your video settings and everything, but also the join URL is there. So just copy and paste that URL into Google Classroom. You will see to the right of the URL, there is a link that you can click on that says copy the invitation. That's just gonna give you a little more information than what you actually need. The only part that you need is the link right under join Zoom meeting. Your students should only need to click on the link to get into Zoom, which is great. Um, in advance, I would recommend that students download the Zoom app to their tablet, if they're using a personal tablet, or to a phone if they're using a phone. Um, if they're using the computer, they shouldn't need to download it. Just clicking on the link is enough to get them in. They do not need to even create a Zoom account. They can just click on the link and then be able to get in. Now that you're set up on how to do a meeting, I suggest you practice, whether with family members or like using your iPad or your phone and running as like the host on your laptop. Try it out so you can see um, some of the capabilities that it has. I'm going to be offering another um, video that maybe some of you already viewed on YouTube as far as how to run these sessions with students, but some basics just to get you started with when you do your practices um, are the following. Right underneath your video screen of yourself, you're going to see some options and click on those um, to see what you can do as far as like screen sharing and things like that. And I'll be adding another tutorial that's more specific to the actual use. But one thing I want to make sure you're comfortable with is if you click on the chat button underneath your video window, you'll see on the side, this is where your participants would be able to talk to each other. And it shows that you can mute them or unmute them all. Um, you can have it and you should definitely set this up that participants can only chat with the host and not with each other. And you'll see these options when you click on the more button. So just some things to try out at first. Um, and then like I said, we'll share another video on how to handle the screen sharing and how to use your screen as a whiteboard and things like that. But hopefully this is enough to get you started.